Welcome everyone. My name is Lucy. Welcome to our Missouri Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. I just have a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You as an attendee can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Just make sure to at whichever school your question is for. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Um, there are multiple sessions that are happening um, throughout the next few weeks and the rest of the spring recruitment, so please feel free to come back and join us for those sessions. Um, the presentation is also being recorded and will be available about with about a, about a week or so um, after tonight, uh, and it's available at strivescan.com slash Missouri. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to University of California, Irvine. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Lucy. That was uh, so quick. I was a little slow on my um, switch over. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, while I'm pulling up my screen, my name is Andrea. I am with the University of California, Irvine. I have been with UC Irvine for about seven years, but I've worked throughout the UC system. And one of the great things of working for the UC system is the ability to learn a lot of the UC campuses. They're all wonderful, but tonight I'm here to talk a little bit about UCI. And one of the highlights about UCI is our location. So we have a fabulous location. We are halfway between Los Angeles and San Diego, only about 10 minutes from Newport Beach, 75 and sunny pretty much year round. This is a picture um, actually outside of one of our Starbucks, um, looking into the center of campus, which is a huge park. It's beautiful. Um, and we're in a really safe city. So it's um, great to be in this beautiful, beautiful space. We're also really close to a lot of fun things to do in the neighborhood. So 20 minutes to Disneyland, um, 10 minutes to the beach. We're only about an hour and a half from, from some pretty good ski hills too. So there is definitely this enjoyment of the outdoor kind of adventure, outdoor um, you know, philosophy, and uh, whether that's hiking and biking or just studying in the park. All of those are cool in our book. We are also a very interdisciplinary campus, and part of that is really by design. We are only 54 years young, so we're a pretty young campus. So when they built our campus, they built it in this circular way because they really felt that they wanted a campus that one reflected our modern thinking and our modern way of life. But another thing was they really wanted every discipline to work together. So on our campus, every professor is expected to work with other departments. So they might teach in two different schools. They might teach in one school and do research in another. We even have over 100 research centers on our campus, and many of those are collaborative between a bunch of different departments. So an example of that is the um, Center for Shakespearean Studies, where you have um, art history folks, and you have our literary faculty, and you have uh, people from our theater and drama departments, um, and our film departments all coming together to, to talk about different issues um, and how that impacts today, um, and even more important ones too. So we have some research going on on our campus right now that's looking at climate change and racial justice issues and the overlap of those. So our campus was built in this circle to really bring together all these disciplines. So what are you looking at here? The middle is a huge park, over 11,000 trees. It's very green, very beautiful, great Wi-Fi on campus, so students study in the park. We also have four different career fairs uh, every year, and those are typically hosted in the park during non-COVID. Uh, we also have two involvement fairs. We have over 600 clubs at UCI. So uh, those involvement fairs, they'll all set up tables in the park and you'll walk around, get to know them. The whole campus doesn't take too long to get across because of the circular approach and the path through the, that park to get around Ring Road, which is that circle on the outside, to get from one side to the next is about 25, 20 minute walk. This depends on how fast you're walking. Um, if you go like this way, if you go through the park, it's closer to 15, 20 minutes. So you can get around our campus pretty easy. We are a residential campus. We have capacity for uh, well over half of our entire student body, which is large, as you can see from those numbers. But our freshman students, we want them, the first year students, to really live as close to the center of that heart as possible. So Middle Earth Housing is on your left. Those are those dark brown buildings with two towers. These are named after Lord of the Rings characters. So it's just a fun little nod to have two towers. Those just opened last year. And then down by the two blue circles, that's where Mesa Court is. Um, they also have traditional and towers. Uh, they have three towers and those towers just opened uh, three years ago. So pretty new housing also being built on campus. We're growing, which is an exciting uh, place to be in for a university. 
So uh, you see quite a bit on here. Um, it's just a really great place to learn. So what are our majors like? Because I think that's a huge question. So things we're best known for, we are probably best known in the pre-med, pre-health, biology, medicine field. You can make anything you see on here pre-med, but typically where we see students is one of, in one of our 10 biology majors or in our nursing, pharmacy, or public health school. Uh, we also see a lot of students in computer science and engineering. So this is another pretty common area where we'll see students uh, come from all over the country and all over the world to be a part of the UCI community. Many of the majors that you see listed on here incorporate some sort of hands-on learning. So while we are a research school and we're gonna teach you how to critically think in whatever field you wanna study, we also want you to get that hands-on experience to really build your resume. Um, we have over 14 languages that we offer. We have a top 10 dance major in the country, a top five criminology major, lots and lots to choose from. So in our backyard, um, we have one third of all Fortune 500 companies, lots of opportunities for internships. We also have great hands-on opportunities from study abroad to research to pretty much anything else you can think of. So I just want to, um, kind of close on some admissions info. I know I covered a lot in a little bit of time. So for admissions, UCI, um, we are part of the UC system. So when you go to apply, the requirements for the whole UC system are the same, whether you're applying to UCLA, Irvine, Santa Barbara, any of us, um, and the application is the same. The application becomes available in August, um, that's before your senior year, and then you submit in November of your senior year. If you're taking a gap year, you would, you would submit in November of that gap year. We don't do early action or early decision. We just have our kind of standard timeline. So you apply in November, we let you know in March, and then you let us know by May 1st. So thank you for your time tonight. Um, we are a selective institution. Uh, feel free to touch base. Uh, you can do so by taking a screenshot of this and um, connect with me through our one-on-one -on -one hours or any of our presentations. Thank you and have a wonderful night. Thank you. Okay, next up we will hear from Western Colorado University. Thank you so much. Hello everyone. My name is Lindsay Leggett and I am a Regional Director of Recruitment for Western Colorado University in Gunnison, Colorado. Um, it's absolutely beautiful this time of year, certainly not this green, um, especially this week. Colorado is projected to get uh, about five feet of snow, so I'm hoping that that happens. Um, but I really appreciate your time tonight, and I'm really honored to be a part of this panel with some other really excellent institutions. You can kind of see um, just an idea of how big campus is here at Western for around 3,000 students, so a pretty small institution. Um, but the population of the town of Gunnison is around 8,000 people, including the college. So small mountain town and small institution. And that was one of the things that I loved about being a student at Western. Another thing that I really loved when I was a student at Western was that our backyard is nature's best classroom. So every single student on Western's campus has access to over 2 million acres of public land. We've got a bunch of national forest land, BLM land. Um, all of this public land that students have access to for research and recreational opportunities as well. So lots and lots of things to do both on and off campus. Even if you're not necessarily interested in a science related field, Western is a uh, public liberal arts institution. So there are lots of opportunities for hands on learning as well in other courses. We offer small class sizes. Our average class size is 17 students, but the largest class that we have on campus is only about 50. So we don't have a single lecture hall on campus. All of your classes will be very discussion based and um, it provides a lot of access one on one to your professors and also to really get to know and work well with your peers in your courses. As far as affordability, Western um, is well below the national average for out-of-state tuition, but we also offer some really competitive financial aid award packages. If a student has at least a 3.35 GPA, they will automatically be awarded $8,000 per year to attend Western. And that can go all the way up to $10,000 per year, depending on GPA. For the fall of 2021, we are totally test optional, both for um, admissions and for our merit scholarships. So test scores are not a requirement for the fall of 2021. And then there are other uh, scholarship opportunities for students. So just because you're from Missouri, you automatically will be awarded our Central Plains discount if you do not qualify for that merit scholarship. 
And that's around a $4,146 scholarship per year just for being from Missouri. We also have a common scholarship application that will apply you to over 40 different scholarships on our website. And each program, um, academic program has program-based scholarships as well. We also have quite a few services offered to students entirely included in your cost of attendance. So at no extra cost to you. Um, we really focus a lot on academic advising and career advising at Western. So every single freshman and transfer student is automatically paired with an academic advisor to help make sure that they are getting registered for the correct courses and staying on track to graduate. But they'll also be somebody that's in your corner and ready to write a um, really great letter of recommendation if you're looking for a job. Same thing with career services. You can sit down with a career advisor and get help, whether you're looking for a work study job on campus or an internship or a career after you graduate. We offer one-on-one -on -one advising for every student in that area. They can do mock interviews and um, look over your resume and cover letter. We also have a writing center and a math tutoring center. So if you'd like help in either of those areas, um, those centers are open eight to five every weekday and then certain times on the weekends as well. So plenty of help in that scenario. We also have an EPIC mentorship program. So every single freshman and transfer student that comes to Western is automatically paired with an EPIC mentor. And this is a student who is a sophomore through a senior at Western. So they've experienced at least a year on campus and they've gotten involved in a lot of stuff and can help get, uh, make sure that you're getting involved in the things that you wanna get involved in at Western. But they're also just a really great resource and a, a peer resource for you on campus. So they're a friendly face once you get to campus as well. If you are interested in visiting campus, we would absolutely love to have you. We are open for in-person visits. Um, if you're not able to visit campus, that's totally fine as well. We also have a virtual tour option on our website. You can find either of those options at western.edu forward slash visit. And we also have some other recruitment events coming up this semester. So if you're interested in a specific academic program, we've got academic deep dive sessions and those can be found at western.edu forward slash recruitment events. And if you're interested in applying, you can go to western.edu forward slash apply. We do operate off of rolling admissions, so there is no application deadline. You can apply at any time and within one to three weeks, we will review and process your application and get you an admissions decision. Uh, as I said earlier, we are test optional for the fall of 2021 and hoping to be so moving forward. Just waiting on a couple of things from the Colorado Department of Higher Education for approval in that sense. Um, but if you are interested in applying this year, you can use our application fee waiver, which is Go Western 2021. And that is all that I have for you today, but please feel free to jot down my contact information. That's my email address and phone number. You can call or text at any point with questions, and I am more than happy to chat with you. So thank you very much for your time and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. Okay, next up, we're going to hear from Verto Education. Um, thank you. I am going to share screen. Let's see. All right. So Virto Education, we are a little bit different than the um, other colleges presenting today. So what Virto is, is we actually offer that freshman semester of college traveling in other countries. Um, so it's a different way to start college, but um, really putting that study abroad feel front and center. Um, we do keep students on track on their four-year college timeline, so it's not an extra addition like gap year or anything. We are a fully accredited college semester. Um, so Virta's mission as an organization, we aim to provide higher education and international experiences for students all across the board, no matter um, their circumstances, no matter where they're coming from or where they want to end up. So hoping just to make both of those things more accessible for more students. That really shakes down into three main pillars. The first is just looking at our semesters in general and how we're aiming to be the best first year of college. Second pillar is a great fit, um, great fit school. So that's where our partner colleges come into play. We actually partner with over 50 universities in the States. And the third pillar is affordable, affordability. So an affordable college education, very important. Um, so 
our college semesters, there's a lot to unpack there, but we do aim to be the best first year of college in a couple of ways. Um, just looking at our semesters in general, we have two different types. We have six locations in total that you can choose from. You can do a full year with Virto if you want, pick and choose two different locations. We have on-campus semesters and field semesters, which I'll go into the difference of those in just a sec, but um, something for, for each type of student, depending on what you're looking for. Our academics, you're traveling with your Virto cohort, you're with your professors and program leaders. So if you're going to London, you're with uh, your group of Virto students that are also in London. Um, all of those classes are freshman gen eds. So it's getting 16 credits, taking four college courses, but it's all experiential learning. Um, so when you're sitting in the classroom, we're also doing stuff outside of the classroom as well to really connect that heart and head and hands. Um, we have a lot of different support services for our students, aside from the, the staff on the ground, which is our program leaders and professors. We also have a, a lot of, um, yeah, a huge amount of staff here in the States to support all of our students. We have affinity groups and purpose-finding workshops as well um, that are weaved throughout the semesters. So these are our six locations. England, Italy, and Spain are on campus. Hawaii, Latin America, and South Pacific are in the field. The on-campus semesters are more traditional, so kind of that picture of study abroad, whereas the Hawaii, Latin America, South Pacific the field semesters are a lot less traditional, um, more adventurous. So the campus semester, this is just a snapshot of one of them. So this is what London looks like for you. So you can see this information is all on our website, but um, you're staying in a student residence, you're sharing rooms and common spaces with Virto students. You guys are commuting to class. You're not taking all of those classes listed, you're picking out four of them. Um, and yeah, you do have more free time and more independence for travel on our campus semesters. We do things as a group as well. So these are some of the excursions that we're doing. Some of these tie directly into the classes that we're taking and some of them are just for fun. For the field semesters, they're on a block schedule. So every month we're actually in a different location and we're staying in, not in student residences, but we're staying in um, base houses and home bases like eco lodges, um, ho hotels. So kind of just like spreading out. And um, every month we're actually focusing on a different course as well. So it's better for students who might do better honing in on one thing. Again, not taking all these classes, you're only taking four total, um, but we have a selection here. So the South Pacific semester, you actually go from Fiji to Australia to New Zealand. So you're traveling around quite a bit and we have some fun stuff that we're doing for our field semesters as well. Very busy packed schedules. For the field semesters, we actually are partnering with organizations in the field, um, in the country to get hands-on experience. So if you're taking an environmental science course, you're actually working on environmental science projects alongside local community members. The second pillar, our partner colleges. Um, this is pretty awesome. This is a very huge part of Virto. So as I mentioned, we partner with over 50 universities. That number is always growing. But what that means is when you when you apply to Virto, you actually have the option to apply to up to five of our partner colleges. You don't have to. If you're interested in any other university, that's no sweat. We're going to work with you, make sure those credits will transfer. Um, but it's a great way to apply to up to five universities for free. Um, it's a non-binding application and we're kind of doing that heavy lifting for you. We have an open communication with our partner colleges. So we're able to get our students a holistic review um, and a quicker admissions decision. So in just a couple of weeks. So you can see there's just a couple of them. Uh, we've got big, small, public, private, all across the states, uh, pretty awesome diversity of partner schools. And we offer a guaranteed admission to 27 of those universities for students who do complete um, one to two semesters of Virto and keep a minimum, minimum requirements that are dictated by each of these colleges. So the third pillar is affordability. Um, so Virto really wants to meet families where they're at. So we aim to be as affordable, if not much more affordable than traditional four-year university semesters. Um, so we're part of that four-year plan. Our semesters range from 15 to 25,000 um, at starting cost. We do offer institutional aid. Um, we have interna international leadership awards, opportunity grants, and we do accept FAFSA as well. Um, happy to work with any families to get everyone on the same page, make sure it's a good fit. Um, I will go ahead and stop now, but this is a QR code if you're interested in sharing. Um.
my phone is ringing. Great timing. Thank you. Okay, next up we will hear from University of Wyoming. Um, good evening. My name is First Step Patrick, and I'm going to share my screen. I am the regional representative for the University of Wyoming. We are located in Laramie, Wyoming. Just a couple of facts. We are the only university in the entire state. We are considered a medium-sized university. So we have a little over 12,000 students. Our student to faculty ratio is 15 to one. So our average class size is about 30 students. Um, we do try to do a really good job of having in-state and out-of-state. So based on our last year's data, we have a 50-50 split. So 50% of our students are coming from the state of Wyoming, and then 50% are coming from outside of the state. So skip the slide. Um, we definitely, of course, being located in the state of Wyoming, we have access to a lot of outdoor activities, more than 100 miles of biking trails, um, 15 minutes away from climbing, hiking, and bike trails. We offer a lot of equipment for the students to use on campus through our outdoor recreation center. So we try to do a really healthy balance of the academic as well as the social. On campus, especially for our in-state and out-of-state students, we definitely love to show that UW pride. We are NCAA Division I in our athletics for our men and women's sports teams. But if you do not play competitively, we definitely like for our students to also get involved with our club sports and our intramural sports. Um, Greek system, we do have Greek row on our campus, fine arts, and we have over 300 clubs and organizations, including our student government. Residence life, so if you're an incoming freshman, we do have a first year living requirement. We have um, four residence halls currently. Um, we do ask our students to look into freshman interest groups. Those can be based on academics. So we have a hall for our students that are interested in engineering, but we also have um, social halls for students that are just wanna connect with other students that might share their same interests, just for networking purposes. A little bit about our majors, not an exhaustive list by any means, but we do offer over 200 different areas of study everything from accounting to zoology. So we hope we can find something for you. Our top majors right now are our academic colleges, our College of Agriculture, our College of Business, our College of Engineering, and our competitive College of Nursing. So a little bit about the admissions process. Um, in a normal, typical year, we would look for your, G um, your transcript with a GPA of a 3.0. Um, we typically do accept test scores. Uh, we look for a 21 on the ACT or a 1060 on the SAT, but for fall 2021, we are test optional for admissions, meaning, of course, you don't have to submit test scores. We are still awaiting decisions by our Board of Trustees for fall 2022. We have typically rolling admissions for many of our programs, those 200 majors and programs of study I mentioned before. The only two that are direct and have kind of like a hard set deadline are our direct entry nursing in our pharmacy program. Um, that deadline is December the 1st. To apply, you can find us on the common application or on our website. There is a $40 application fee. And of course we require your transcript so that we can have a completed file to make an admissions decision. We, of course, if you are taking advanced placement, you're in IB or dual enrollment courses, we definitely accept those and we welcome those students. So whether it comes in with your um, high school transcript or you send it in as supplemental documentation, we are happy to have it. Out-of-state scholarships, uh, we offer two currently children of alumni benefits. So if your parents um, have attended and graduated from the University of Wyoming, we do have a children of alumni uh, tuition benefit discount. We also offer the brown and gold commitment. This is a merit-based scholarship. You can see the different incremental amounts listed on the screen. Um, currently, again, for fall 2021, we are also test optional for scholarships. Typically, we would have a sliding scale for your GPA, as well as either your ACT or SAT test score. So if you're applying for fall 2022, then you might wanna check um, in with us to see if we will still remain test optional for scholarship consideration as well. 
Um, also the Honors College, that is open to all of the majors. Um, it's definitely a wonderful program um, just for you to get involved in. It doesn't require any additional um, information. We do ask that if you are interested that you go to the honors page just so we are able to share that information and you can get some more information as well about the program. On campus, um, we are offering in-person tours through the month of April. So we do have that on our visit website that's listed here. We also of course offer virtual tours and also one-on-one -on -one Zoom admission sessions. I am the regional rep, so if you want to take my contact information down, I would be more than happy to connect with you. Thank you so much, and have a great rest of your evening. Thank you. Okay, next up, we're going to hear from University of Redlands. All right. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you all today. Uh, thank you for the uh, the opportunity to present a little about the University of Redlands. Uh, my name is uh, Kenley Jones. I serve as the uh, uh, Director of International Admissions uh, for, for Redlands, which is a, a small private um, liberal arts and sciences university with about 2,500 students uh, on a residential campus uh, located in uh, Southern California. So, you can get an idea of uh, our campus. It's a, it's a gorgeous campus. In fact, uh, so gorgeous that uh, in about the last 10 years, uh, the University of Redlands has processed uh, about a dozen um, TV, uh, movie, and uh, commercial um, um, permits. So um, it can be used uh, for those purposes. Uh, just recently, uh, the last uh, TV show to be filmed at Redlands was actually called The Inheritors, which is a Korean TV show that made uh, Netflix's uh, top 10 list just uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, but this is where we are uh, physically located within Southern California. Uh, we are inland. I like to say we are the, uh, the gateway to the Inland Empire, uh, the desert communities, uh, places that you might be familiar with are Palm Springs, for example, um, Coachella, the, uh, the, the famous music festival is about uh, 45 to an hour away. Uh, you go the other direction towards the, uh, the ocean, you'll obviously hit Los Angeles. Um, we are being a being a residential campus. Uh, we, we're certainly big on opportunities outside of the classroom. Uh, we offer over a hundred uh, student clubs and organizations, Greek Life, uh, NCAA Division Three athletics. Um, so certainly, it is a great opportunity to get involved in leadership and athletics and uh, community service as well. Um, uh, we believe that um, all students should do community service in as much as it is a requirement in order to graduate. Uh, as mentioned, we are a residential community, so the vast majority of our students will live on campus um, all four years. About 80% of them will do so all four years. Uh, and uh, we do it through living and learning communities, and that keeps them close to their classes and the kinds of resources that are going to help them be successful. Now, that being said, you know, even though Redlands is a small university, we're certainly big on opportunities. Uh, one of these opportunities we like to highlight are our study, uh, study away opportunities. Uh, the University of Redlands was actually the first American university to actually have an international campus in Central Europe. And that's our flagship campus located in Salzburg, Austria, which is uh, where Mozart is from. It's home of uh, uh, the, the Red Bull Corporation. So every year we send um, dozens and dozens of students to Salzburg with our uh, resident faculty and staff to have an immersive experience. That's just one of the uh, 100 locations that we go to. And over about 50% of our students will study abroad before they graduate. Um, being a small university, we believe in the relationships, the relationships that you should have with each other, um, the relationships you should have with your faculty members as well. Um, so 13 to 1 student to faculty ratio, average class size being 18, and we do offer about 40 different academic programs in a liberal arts setting. A liberal arts setting means we're going to teach you about both depth and breadth. 
The depth is whatever you choose to do. We're going to give you a marketable degree in biology or business. The breadth is allowing you to be well-rounded and versatile. This is a little bit about our first year admissions, uh, depending on if you want to apply early decision or, or early action or regular decision. Uh, we have moved for test optional, and that's not a COVID policy. That was something uh, we decided to do uh, prior to COVID. Uh, and we do believe in a holistic approach that there isn't going to be one reason why you're admitted to Redlands, nor one reason why you're denied. We really look at uh, your entire application to determine your admissibility. Great scholarships, and we are affordable. So um, please do not, um, uh, there seems to be a myth or a perception out there that, that private universities are, are uh, not affordable, and, and that that. That simply is not true. Uh, the reality is even though we might have a higher sticker price, uh, we do award very generous financial aid um, uh, packages. And in, you can see what our average financial uh, aid package is. That is about a 60, 68 to 70% discount off of our total price. Well, one of the, the ways we also talk about value is our four-year promise. And, and that's uh, even though we, you, know, you know what the national uh, average is in terms of graduating in four years, um, it, 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 you know, the reality is our students, about 90% of them will graduate in four years. And we give you the resources, uh, the, the courses, and the support in order to do so. Um, once again, our beautiful campus, great ways to connect with us. and. Uh, just to let you in on another movie uh, fact, uh, you all know the actor Nicolas Cage. Um, okay, he didn't go to Redlands, uh, but his brother did. So good enough for the, uh, the sibling of Mr. Cage. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and then finally for this evening, University of San Diego. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Jackie Burkett. I'm a senior admission counselor here at the University of San Diego. I'm also a very proud alumna of the class of 2011. Uh, so we are a private Catholic university. Uh, we were founded by the Diocese of San Diego and the Sisters of the Sacred Heart. And one of our founders, Mother Rosalie Hill, she had this idea that if she built a beautiful campus, it would draw people here. On campus, our students would find truth within truth truth, find goodness, and be able to spread that goodness around the world. Uh, so beauty, truth, and goodness is really what USD is all about, and it still runs with us today as we are the number six most beautiful campus in the nation, thanks to the Princeton Review. But let me tell you a little bit about our campus community and where our students come from. So we do have about 5,900 undergraduates, about 2,600 grad and law students, so we are considered a mid-sized university. 48% of our students come from out of state, about 10% are international, so that does leave the rest Californians. 38% of our students identify as being students of color, and only about 40% of our students identify as Catholic. So we really do have students coming from all across the globe, all different walks of life, and that is something that we celebrate on our campus. We have our Center for Inclusion and Diversity and our Commons, which houses our Women's Commons, our LGBTQ and Allies Commons, our Black Student Resource Commons, as well as our United Front Multicultural Center, which houses 33 different multicultural clubs and organizations. So lots of opportunities to grow within your own culture and learn about others while you're here. And of course, the whole purpose of college is to receive an education, and we believe in the liberal arts at USD. So you're not just going to be studying courses within your major, but courses within everything else as well, from fine arts, math, science, history, philosophy. And we do require two semesters of theology as a part of our core curriculum, but that could be in whatever faith tradition you'd like to explore. We offer Buddhism, Hindu, Judaism, even fun courses like Jesus in Hollywood and pop culture. Uh, but we do have 42 different majors to choose from, about 56 different minors. We have a wonderful school of business, definitely has a great reputation, an awesome school of engineering, which is only seven years old and already 13th in the nation for undergraduate engineering programs. And of course, a college of arts and sciences, which houses some popular majors like biology, psychology, communications, and political science. And my favorite experience at USD was the small class sizes. 
Average class size is only 22 and we cap our classes at 40. So we really want our students working one-on-one -on -one with professors. So all of our courses are taught by professors. 97% of them have a terminal degree in their field. But our students are not only focused inside the classroom, but outside. We have over 180 different clubs and organizations to get involved in. Everything from our accounting society to our skydiving club, whatever you could possibly think of in between. Uh, we do have fraternity and sorority life on our campus. We have about nine sororities, nine fraternities. Now we do not have traditional housing on or off campus because we wanted to continue our founders beliefs in having a very inclusive community. We're also home to 17 NCAA Division I sports. We play in the West Coast Conference, except for football. We're 1AA, we play in the Pioneer League. Uh, so we definitely have a lot of Torero pride on our campus, but our students are not only involved on campus, but off campus. Uh, we live in San Diego, which is the eighth largest city in the US. We're just 15 minutes north of downtown, 15 minutes south of La Jolla, most importantly, 10 minutes away from the beaches. So our students enjoy getting off campus as well and taking full advantage of this awesome city that we live in. And things that kind of make USD unique is that we are one of only 45 change maker campuses in the world, designated because of what we do outside the classroom. And this all goes back to our Catholic roots of wanting to be of service to others. So our Torero community is committed to social justice, social innovation, entrepreneurship, sustainability, and global citizenship as well. Our students do simple things like fundraising to send number two pencils to third world countries. Something as big as completely developing and building an irrigation system for a village in Sudan. So we want our students to think about not only how they're gonna have an impact at USD, but how they're gonna impact the world. Uh, so we're consistently ranked top 10 in the nation for our study abroad participation. We have over 80 different programs, 30 different countries, six different continents. It ranges for three weeks during winter, six weeks over summer, a whole semester or a whole year abroad. So you could possibly study abroad more than once and still graduate in four years. And we also have our own USD center in Madrid. Um, hopefully this was a nice little teaser for you all. You're all excited about USD. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I am your admission counselor. Again, my name's Jackie Burkett. I'm here to help you all through the application process. Uh, so if you're interested in USD, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you all. Thanks so much. Okay, with that, um, that'll wrap things up for this evening. So I'm just gonna share my screen one final time um, with some closing remarks for everyone. So thank you again for joining. Oh, sorry. Thank you again for joining. Um, so when you close out of this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We would appreciate any feedback you can provide. Uh, and in, the, in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as the other sessions recordings that have happened throughout this evening at strivescan.com slash Missouri. Thank you again. And thank you um, to my panelists uh, and have a great evening. Thanks everyone. <laughs>